Hello and welcome back to another episode of Furry Friday. Today we're going to be talking about elephant shrews, so macro silicidia. Um, they're also called senji or jumping shrews, and they're once considered a divergent family of, family of Afrosauricidia, which has Hyraxes, elephants, sea cows in it. Um, and there are 19 recognized species of ele- elephant shrews. And if you look at this picture down here, you'll see, um, unlike authentic shrews, um, they're not very, not super closely related. Um, they're also not venomous like other shrews are, like authentic shrews. Um, so speaking about their natural history, um, they form monogamous pairs that limit live in a common territory. Um, and they aren't often like together during this time, like when they're in these territories, but they do keep track of each other through um, scent markings. They are completely intolerant of close neighbors, so they will aggressively like kick out anybody that comes into their territory. This involves screaming, sparring, snapping, and kicking. They are insectivorous, and they do most of their foraging in the daylight, so they have, they eat ants, termites, beetles, spiders, millipedes, earthworms, any kinds of insects like that. Um, And unlike other small mammals, they actually feed during the daylight. Talking about their habitat and distribution, this picture gives a good idea where a lot of elephant shrews live in Africa. Um, They're widely distributed throughout there, um, except for the Sahara region and Western Africa. Um, But despite the fact that they're widely distributed, seeing them is actually pretty rare. The four-toed elephant shrew is one of the most widespread species. Um, So they go from central to eastern to the northeastern corner of South Africa, which is a majority of it. Um, They also live in forest canopy, like woodlands, thickets. Um, Usually the floor that they are in is densely covered by light leaves. So speaking about their morphology, they're highly adapted for leaping. So their hind limbs, if you look at this picture, are much longer than their forelimbs. They have a long tapered flexible snout, also called a proboscis, which is what elephants have, giving them the name. They have slim bodies, slender limbs, um, like I said, the elongated snout. They also have large eyes and large ears, which is used for escaping predators and their sensory system. Um, they range from mouse size to also the size of like a large rat. So not a huge difference, especially like when we look at the difference in like armadillos, um, but still a pretty significant difference. Like they're not all the same size. Um, some species are brightly colored. Others are just plain gray, brown. Um, and they also have a hunchback posture, which you can see here in a long scaly tail. And there's actually a gland on the underside of their tails that produces the scent that marks their territory. So like I was saying, how the um, monogamous pair keep track of each other using scent markings, that gland produces that scent. Um, reprodu- this picture is so cute. They're so small. <laughs> um, speaking about reproduction, they do give birth like three to five times a year. They give birth to fully haired new- newborns um, that remain hidden for the first like three weeks and then follows the mother around for about one week. And then after they're weaned and they become independent, the offspring usually are in the parents' like territory like we've been talking about um, for another six weeks and then they go out on their own. Um, but they're precocal at birth and the litter size is usually like one to two young, so it's not a lot. Um, but their gestation is about two months, which is in line with um, them being smaller mammals. Some fun facts about them. They can only live up to two years in the wild. Again, that's in line with smaller animals. They don't live as long. They can leap up to three (coughs) feet in the air, and they can run up to 18 miles per hour just to escape predators. Um, They use their noses and paws to clear pathways on the ground and lure insects in, so like the long little proboscis nose. Um, And they use their long, thin tongues for hunting and eating, kind of like anteaters. Here's a video. If it'll play. <laughs> so that gives a good idea of how they like use their nose like a little thing to dig and find insects. Um, and then here are my sources. That was a short one. Um, keep in tune for Mammal Monday. We're gonna be talking about. Um, I don't know what we're gonna end up doing. It'll be something interesting.